Hello and welcome to the Zenata Consulting and CRM Zen Show Beginner Series. This is our series on Zoho Books. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colts. And with that, I'll go ahead and jump into our topic for today, which is going to be the purchase process here from within Zoho Books. Um, so there are kind of two primary reasons that you might log a purchase in books. Um, one of them would be if you're purchasing items from a vendor or manufacturer so that you're able to, you know, log any cost of goods sold or, you know, purchase costs from those. And then another might be raising a bill for more of an ad hoc payment that you're going to make, uh, something like insurance. Uh, you know, so you're paying out to an insurance company and you just want to make sure that you have a bill on file for that so that everything gets uh, accounted for properly. So to do that, we'll go ahead and jump into the purchases tab here. Um, the first thing we'd want to do is just make sure that we have the proper vendors in the system for these different products or services. Um, so in this case, we have our widget manufacturer, and then we have an insurance company, uh, which will give us everything we need to walk through these two different use cases. So if we're going to go ahead and purchase a product from someone that we're going to sell in the future, we'll want to go ahead and raise a purchase order. Um, so again, basically, you know, you can raise your purchase order. You can then mark that you've received those goods, and then you can convert it to a bill to record that you've now paid for that. Um, so I'll go ahead and create a purchase order now. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is select our vendor. So in this case, we're gonna buy some widgets from our manufacturer here. It's gonna give you the option to deliver either to our organization or to a customer. Um, so kind of a little interesting use case here that we won't dig into a lot, but if you're drop shipping, products, you can actually use purchase orders to submit a drop shipment order to your vendor. Um, in this case, we want these widgets just delivered right here to Zanata HQ so that we can ship those out to our customers. Uh, going down the page, of course, we have our purchase order number. This can be customized, so we can either say that we want to manually enter them, or we could give it our own prefix or numbering series if we want to customize that. Of course, we can have a reference number here. Um, if you're purchasing this against a certain sales order, which I'll actually show in a moment, then that reference number will automatically populate here. But in this case, you know, we might not need a reference number. Then of course, we can log things like, you know, when we're expecting these to be delivered, what are our payment terms for this purchase? Um, you know, do we have a preference on shipping methods and, and so on? Um, but now here to kind of the important stuff. So, you know, here we'll have our list of items that we're able to purchase. So I'll go ahead and select our widget. That's going to pull our default purchase price of 250. Um, I can change this. So maybe I'm trying to be cheeky and I want to decrease my price. So maybe I decrease that down to 200 and submit the order this way. And then again, an important piece here is that we can actually map, you know, which chart of accounts entry this should go into as we're making this purchase. And you might want to note that in a previous video, we talked about setting up these items. And when you actually set up this widget item, you put the sale price in there, you put the amount of money it's going to cost you for that item, and you automatically map it to the account. That's why that all fills out. Yep. And then running down the page, of course, maybe we're going to ask for an extra discount here. So I want you know $250 off. And then, of course, I'm going to have to map this discount account as well, basically where it's going to subtract that from. And then we can go ahead and move forward. So I'll go ahead and save and send this now. This gives us an email template here, which of course can be customized and it'll look, go ahead and attach that purchase order as a PDF. Now, in this case, we don't actually have a email address on file for this vendor. Um, so I'll go ahead and just enter this as a draft and I'll mark it as issued, which to the system just tells it that you've sent this through other means, right? So maybe you download the PDF and send it in your own email. Now, once you have this purchase order created, there are two kind of objects that come out of it. One of them is a shipment receive, and another is our bill. Uh, so the shipment receive actually comes from Zoho inventory, which is kind of like the other side of the coin of Zoho books. So I won't dig into that too much other than just kind of letting you know that the receive is what's actually going to account for your physical inventory. So that means that I actually have this in stock now versus the converting it to a bill like we're going to do now is for your accounting inventory saying that I have paid for this, which means that it's now within your accounting inventory. So a couple little differences there just based on if you are or are not using inventory with this. Um, but now I'll go ahead and convert this to a bill, which is basically letting Zoho know that we're going to pay for this. 
we'll give it a bill number. Maybe we want to call this bill 01. Of course, the order number is going to pre-fill with our purchase order number. It's going to automatically pull all these values from the purchase order, including our discount. And then we can go ahead and save this as an open bill. And so once we're actually have made a payment for this, we'll come in and record payment against this bill to say that now we have actually paid for it. So we'll say we've made a payment of, you know, 1750. If there were any bank fees that you wanted, so maybe there is a transaction fee of 50 bucks, you could log that in here. You can also then say, you know, which payment mode you made this through and which account did it come from? So if I paid this from our holding account, I could actually go ahead and um, define it that way. If you were paying this via something like check, you might want to actually upload an image of that check just so you have it here in the system in case there's any disputes later, you can go ahead and refer back to that in the future. Oh, looks like because our bank charges here, it wants me to pay through a bank account. Then here, now we have a paid bill logged. <clears throat> and one of the nice things is, is that if we come back to our purchase order, this purchase order will actually give you a link directly to this bill and vice versa. So we can actually get back and forth between our purchase order and our bill super easily there. Now there's one other use case for creating a purchase order um, that's important to touch on real quick. And if you haven't seen our previous video on the sales process, you wanna go ahead and check that out because that's gonna actually reference the sales order that we created in that video. Um, so in this case, let's say we had a sales order out for a widget here and you know, maybe we're on back order or maybe we're ordering these things you know, as we're receiving the, um, you know, the sales. So from this sales order, I can actually go under the more tab and go to convert to purchase order. We can choose if we wanna bring those item descriptions in. They ask this just in case you put some customer facing descriptions that you don't wanna to show to your vendor or if that information just wouldn't be necessary for them. And so from here, it basically is just gonna automatically create that PO for us. And it's going to assign that reference number as the sales order and pre-fill our widgets here with the amount that we had from the sales order. Now, that being said, if this was an item that you're selling all the time, you don't have to order only what was on the sales order. I could up this up to 15 or up to 10 units um, just based on what I need at this point in time. And then from there, the rest of the process uh, functions the exact same. So you can mark it as received, you can mark it as um, you know build and just move forward as you would um, if you were to raise a purchase order independent of a sales order. Now, the one other use case here for the purchasing space would be for you know payments that you're sending out that aren't related to items that you're selling. Right, so this would be payments for insurance, you know, payments out to um, any other service providers like that. And so for that, we can actually go just directly to a bill. Uh, so in this case, I'll go ahead and just raise a new bill. We'll choose our vendor. So in this case, we're going to pay for our insurance. So I'll go ahead and choose that insurance company. I'll give it a bill number. And when you click on this item details, you know, it's going to pull down your list of items, but you don't have to choose one of these existing items when you're putting something on a bill. So I could actually just type in insurance as our item here. Now, because this isn't an item, it's not going to know the default account or the default rate. So I can actually come in and just choose that. So within here, if you've uh, checked out our video on our chart of accounts, we actually have our insurance all mapped up here into some accounts. So let's say this was a payment for auto insurance. We'll go ahead and log that against the auto insurance account. And let's say we've got a great deal on auto insurance. So it's only gonna be a hundred bucks for this payment. If this was on behalf of any customers, you could log in a customer line item here. But in this case, this is just for our insurance. So we don't need to do that. Um, one little thing with this that is kind of nice is if this is something you're going to pay for every month, like auto insurance, you can actually just convert this right over into a recurring bill that would pop up at the same time every month um, and just save you the effort of having to manually create that. But in this case, let's uh, go ahead and just save this as one default bill. Maybe our you know insurance price changes every month, so we don't want to have it be recurring. So I'll go ahead and just save this as an open bill. 
And from there, we would just go through that exact same process of recording a payment against this once it is completed. Um, so again, bills in this case, you know, they're not really going to affect your inventory or anything like that. This is just a quick and easy way to make sure that any outbound payments that you're making get logged into the chart of accounts properly. So that at the end of the year, when you pull your PL and you pull any of those kind of aggregate reports, everything has been logged into books and those will all just be created for you. I guess one last note on this is if you don't record a bill, maybe it's an automatic payment that's just coming out of your checking account. When you're reconciling your account, you can go ahead and basically put associated with the right chart of accounts at that time without having to physically create a bill. But a lot of companies, they get paper bills in, they want to catalog them, they want to have due dates, they want to know all of that. This is really a great way of, uh, of managing that process. We want to thank you so much for uh, listening to our tutorial today. And if you enjoyed this, you can follow us over at Zanata.com and always feel free to drop us a line at info at Zanata.com.